Hello Hoopaholics, it's Coach Spins back in the film room here to break down Peyton Pritchard and his pick and roll creation and how that might translate from his time at Oregon to the Boston Celtics. And Pritchard was a prolific statistical point guard, both in terms of the offense he created in general and as a scorer. He rated out excellent in synergy stat categories in the 90th percentile of all NCAA basketball and was efficient both in finishing near the basket and dribble jumpers. As you zoom in a little bit here, you'll see the rating category, which gives adjectives to guys based on their percentile, and Pritchard was really, really strong. Anytime I'm evaluating a point guard from the college level, I'm always looking for how they shoot it off the bounce. If they are able to knock down threes and force defenders to come out and guard them outside the pick and roll, it's going to open up the lane for them to be a much stronger creator for the rest of their teammates. Pritchard was very good here. He was 20 for 48 on dribble pull-up jumpers out of the pick and roll in his senior year at Oregon. He's got range to three. He hits shots off of side steps or step backs. He's got deep range and off the bounce, that's really important. Because of Pritchard's shooting ability, defenders are going to go over the top of screens against him. And in an NBA where there's a lot of drop pick and roll coverage, where the big man stays in the lane at all times, he's going to have a lot of room and opportunity for mid-range pull-ups. He's also really polished for somebody calling out of college. He's great at using the hostage dribble where he gets his own man on his back when he comes off the pick and roll and that keeps the screener's defender hostage where he can't recover to his man and has to stand there kind of guarding nobody. Because Pritchard is really advanced and savvy with this, likes to lean in and create contact, he's ready for NBA pick and roll offense. Pritchard was statistically efficient as a finisher at the rim. Hit 20 of 28 off the pick and roll when he used the screen. And part of that comes with how often he was able to get to his dominant hand, his right hand. He's got a great in and out dribble and pace when there's space for him to attack the basket. When he drives to his left, he's great at using angles so that he can get to an inside hand finish and seal his defender off with his inside shoulder. They're savvy moves in ways that guys without great athleticism are able to score regardless. He also loves to get to his right hand by refusing the ball screen when it's on the right side of the floor. Normally, if he would come off the screen, it would take him to the middle with his left hand, but he loves to be such right hand dominant player right now that he's able to set up his man, come off the screen, and get to where he needs to go. Peyton is a great ball handler, and he has great control over his dribble, and that allows him to hit holes really hard. When he sees an opportunity to drive hard to his right hand, he takes it without losing control of the basketball, and that allows him to become a much better and more efficient finisher at the basket. He loves to decelerate, where he has these long strides that let his primary defender fly past him and give him a little bit more opportunity to finish at the basket. He's not a great athlete, but because of these long strides, he gives himself more time to finish. That move only works against his primary defender though. He has had less than stellar success trying to lean in to established verticality and the Michigan Wolverines were probably the best team in terms of their discipline on drop coverage and how they protect the basket with NBA verticality principles. He may struggle trying to use that same deceleration move or trying to lean in and create space against bigger more athletic defenders who are well disciplined at the NBA level. If there's one primary concern for Pritchard as a prospect, it's that he doesn't have great vertical athleticism. He is a below the rim finisher and relies on angles and craftiness. So when he meets NBA rim protectors like this here from Zeke Naji, who was a draft pick of the Denver Nuggets, he's gonna struggle. I'd also like to see him improve as a mid-range finisher, especially off of floaters and runners. He tends to play with the basketball a little bit, like to keep his dribble alive, and then take floaters in this mid-range area because the clock is winding down and he has no other outlets. He's going to face some good pick and roll defense in the NBA, so he needs to be able to be more decisive and finish these possessions. That's Pritchard as a scorer, and what about how he plays as a creator for others? The numbers at Oregon weren't fantastic in terms of shots created and, and points per possession of those shots, but a lot of that has to do with the circumstances in which he was frequently guarded. Because he was the primary threat for the Oregon Ducks last year, a lot of teams defensively would try to either trap him, high hedge, or do anything they could aggressively on the perimeter to get the ball out of his hands and into the playmaking prowess of one of his teammates. Because of that, there weren't a ton of great live dribble spread pick and roll plays that he has in his arsenal. 
What I do like about what Pritchard does out of the pick and roll is keep his eyes up towards the basket, manipulate and play with a perfect pace that allows his teammate and screener to get open. You see here, as he comes off the screen, he uses that hostage dribble again, which freezes the help defender and allows him to throw it to his teammate for the and one. Peyton also pairs well with a big man in the dunker spot. This could be where he and Robert Williams develop a lot of chemistry in Boston's second unit. He gets his eyes up really quickly as soon as he gets to a lane attack, which allows him to throw these quick lobs and take advantage of two-on-ones at the basket. Beyond just these quick reads for lobs, he's really good at making wraparound passes when he gets to the basket. Because he's a solid finisher, he draws help defenders into the air, and as soon as they're airborne trying to block his shot, he hits a nifty wraparound pass to his teammate. Brad Stevens hasn't used a big man in the dunker spot a lot within his offense, but if he changes things, Pritchard will be ready. I know we said Pritchard wasn't always able to get into the lane and make live dribble passes, but there are some really good examples of times when he was able to do so at Oregon as a senior. He does make solid reads of help defenses and know when to find his shooters, hit them in their shooting pockets. Most of his, his passes, especially the cross-court variety, are going to be going to his right hand, but he does have the ability to hit a few of them while driving to his left. There's also some evidence out there of him making good plays. We talked about wraparound passes. He brings the same concept to baseline drift when he has a shooter open in the opposite corner. But one of the reasons that opposite corner, which is so key for point guards, wasn't open was because of situations like this where his teammate would try to cut back door from that corner to the basket. And in a situation like this where Pritchard was trying to get him the ball, it really took away from a lot of potential assist opportunities. As a result, most of Pritchard's assists came with strong side vision, where he would hit the man directly in front of him as he comes at an angle off of a ball screen. It's a lot easier to read in this type of situation, and shooters are a lot more ready for those passes to come. We'll need Pritchard to be a little bit more dynamic of a live ball and cross-court passer for the Boston Celtics. There's plenty of evidence to suggest that Pritchard is going to be an impactful offensive player when he has the ball in his hands. And with Kemba Walker's knee injury holding him out of the lineup for the start of the season, the Celtics may need Pritchard sooner than later. Thanks for watching.